Hello, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about affirmative action. Affirmative action is a topic that I think a lot of people kind of shy away from talking about, because there can be some controversies about it. And I want to delve into these controversies. Uh, the feelings that I have about affirmative action are complex. Uh, I tend to support it to a degree in some circumstances, but I've also seen some abuses of it. And I think that at best it's an incomplete way of addressing systematic inequalities. So I want to talk first about why we have affirmative action and what it is. The basic idea of affirmative action is it's the favoring of certain disadvantaged groups of people. So they could be like racial minorities, or women, or groups like that. The favoring of those people in the process for like selection to a university for admitting students, or in like job applications and hiring, or it could be in the awarding of government contracts. And I think that there is the potential for affirmative action to partially address the inequalities in our society. But there's also a, an objection that I hear a lot to it, which is that it causes people to get selected for a job or for admittance to a university who are less qualified and less able to do the work than people who would be selected normally. The degree to which this is true is controversial, and I'm not going to go into all of this. Uh, I think that if you have a situation in which there is racism or sexism at work, it's often possible that the people who are being selected in the first place aren't necessarily the most qualified candidates. Um, it gets a little bit tricky though when you get into questions like systematic inequality of preparation. So for example, in the US, African Americans often are more likely to live in school districts where they have fewer resources, and so they tend to get less of a preparation than white students. So you look at the students, and there might be an objective measure by which the white students are better prepared. But at the same time, it's not necessarily due to any inherent difference in ability, but it's due to this systematic inequality in society. And how to handle that at that point, it seems sort of like a kind of like bad solution no matter what you do. Like whether or not you have affirmative action, it's not fully solving the problem. So when I think about solving racial inequality in the US, I think that you need to do a lot more than affirmative action. And so I tend to not feel super strongly about it on an like ideological level for that reason. But I want to talk about two other things. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is abuse of affirmative action. And I have seen this firsthand in the awarding of government contracts to businesses. There's this idea of like a disadvantaged business. So, uh, and it's defined in terms of like who owns the business. So it could be owned by a woman, or it could be owned by like a racial minority that is viewed as disadvantaged. Um, and it, like, it sounds like a great idea, like if you want to give uh, some priority to businesses that are owned by these disadvantaged groups as a way of like alleviating inequality. But what I have seen is that it actually provides a mechanism through which people who are already privileged and wealthy are able to game the, the system. So for example, I saw a business that was owned by an extremely wealthy man from another country who qualified for the criteria of like a disadvantaged business because of his racial identity. And his business was preferentially awarded these contracts. And meanwhile, this is in Cleveland, Ohio, there are all these other businesses out there that are locally owned by African Americans, which is a large demographic group in that city, that aren't getting these contracts. So, he's kind of gaming the system, and the system is not leading to the outcome that it was desired in the first place. So that's an example of how affirmative action can go wrong. But I want to share one last example. It's a compelling reason why I think affirmative action can actually be beneficial, even if 
it leads to some undesirable outcomes. Like even if you're not necessarily picking the most qualified candidate, or even if people are out there gaming the system to some degree. And that is, if you have a decision-making body, so you're in an organization or a business, and you have like a board or a committee or something like that, and you're discussing things, you're trying to make decisions, you're trying to decide how to run the business, what to do, things like that. There's a lot of evidence that if you have people who have different backgrounds, your board as a whole, or your committee, or whatever unit it is, will make better decisions than if the group is really homogeneous. So for example, if you have a board and it's all white men, this is really common in the top power structures in our society, it's all white men, they're not going to have as much perspective on society as if you have a balance of men and women, and you have a balance of people of different racial backgrounds. And if you have a balance of ages, that's important too. Like a common issue I've seen in business is, and, and also in leadership of any organization, is that the people in the leadership positions tend to be older. I think there's a degree to which older people hold a lot more power in our society, and I think that's unfortunate. So these boards, even if they're racially diverse and have both men and women, they often aren't diverse with respect to age. And there's this cost, this downside to having those voices not be there. Like if you're running a marketing campaign, if there are no women on your panel, you're not going to have as much of a sense, as much of an intuition of how women will respond to your marketing, as if you have a balance of women and men. And if you're trying to reach out to everyone, you really need to have as many perspectives represented as you can, in order to make the best possible decision. If you're talking about something like making laws, I think that there's even more at stake. Like if you look at U.S. Congress, the demographics of U.S. Congress don't reflect the demographics of society as a whole in the U.S. And a really simple example of this is gender. Uh, the U.S. is roughly 50-50 male and female, but it's still more like 80-20 men to women in U.S. Congress. And I think that's pretty bad. I think that's going to lead to towards policies that are more designed around men's experiences than women's. And I think that, so, so back to affirmative action, I think affirmative action solves this. Um, if you kind of force your decision-making body to have certain numbers of people on it, so that you have the demographics of the committee or the board representing the demographics either of society as a whole, uh, or of your target audience for whatever product you're working with, or the demographics of the local area in which your organization operates, if you do that, you might have some costs associated with it, you might lose a little bit of expertise, but you're going to gain a lot. Like that diversity is going to get you new perspectives and going to help you make much better decisions. Uh, and I want to talk about age again. People don't necessarily think about age when they think about affirmative action, but if you're designing policies for a selection of a board or for hiring people, I think it's also important to consider age too, because I think that really impacts the quality of decision making uh, through the diversity of perspectives. So no easy answer, I'm not saying affirmative action yes, no, I just wanted to share this because I wanted to communicate the complexities of the issue. Uh, and I, I want to hear people talking about affirmative action in a more nuanced way, that acknowledges all these different issues. I think if we do that, we'll come to better outcomes than if we sort of make this blanket yes, no stance on it. Um, I'd love to hear from you if you have anything to add, like especially if you have a new facet of this topic that you'd like to contribute, please comment. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, and if you think that this is a valuable video and you want it to reach more people, please share it. Um, thank you.